No technical issues? No technical issues. Okay. It seems like the issues are no longer aside, technical. Aside from the issues from before the stream started, yes, everything's good. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Um, yeah, I, I saw some questions in the in the chat about what we're talking about tonight, just to, to clear it up. We talked about a few abandoned uh, villages recently, and there's a couple more that I had on my mind, so we're going to talk about those as well. Uh, you know, the, the Vinland settlement being one of the ones that interests me the most, especially because of all of the uh suggestions of other viking settlements across the united states that have popped up mm -hmm. um you know most of them don't really have a ton of evidence to them there's a few that are a little bit intriguing i think it's it's foolish of us to suspect that at no point did did they make it over here a second time um you know and just get lost never get back you know there's tons of journeys from the 1800s 1700s where some expedition went off and was found years later because they got trapped in ice or something like that yeah so those those for sure and then of course i also wanted to talk about portlock because it's 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 such a weird one um and the understanding of it since the last time we covered it yeah. has changed quite considerably yeah i was just able to find some actual like older sources on it because it you can find it this this whole subject it, apparently it's been big recently but the whole portlock subject i remember uh from like two or three years ago when mr ballin was talking about it uh he just did a quick like five minute you know run through of the story and then i went when we did this video a year ago uh i went through and i found um you know just sort of like alaska magazine and other alaskan culture stuff about it from the last you know five ten years yeah for the video we did that came out on Friday, I actually went in and really, like, dove in. I found some older sources, was able to locate some interviews. Uh, so not just, you know, people telling and retelling the story over and over again over time. But instead, it was a bit more of a, you know, like, words are hard right now. They well, are. I have, this is my first cup of coffee today. Yeah, so that's where we are. Um, Fair. Yeah, and then uh, we didn't really get a chance to talk about Roanoke on the podcast as well. So I yeah. thought I thought we'd you know dive into all those, and especially you know th this is this is one where I'd be happy to kind of take questions as they roll in, hmm. um, just because of the the subject matter is kind of going to be in so many different places. So if if people send in super chats, we just want to read them as they come in. Sure, um, that's how we'll handle that this time around, just because of the the nature of this this topic this subject. But off the bat. Um, Portlock, by comparison to Roanoke, Roanoke got a lot less weird as I researched it. In what regard? The version that you that most people I think have with Roanoke is they dropped the colony off there, and then when they came back a few years later, there was nobody there, no sign of what happened to them. Mm -hmm. You know, we have no clue. Yep. Looking into it, when you know that there was an attempt to establish a colony there a few years earlier than the 1787 one or the 1587 one. And then you also look at the fact that there had been numerous contacts with the native Americans, um, that there were conflicts going on, mm. you know, that it wasn't just as simple as these guys went missing, Yeah, that there were also other actual political factors occurring. So Roanoke, as, as I studied it more and more, it's still a little bit of a mystery. Exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. We don't totally know. Yep. But we can paint a pretty good picture, and for the most part, you can make the assumption that these people did not go missing under supernatural circumstances, there were no aliens, it was that they were having conflict with the Secatan, and then they moved over to go live with the Croatoan, uh, the Croatan over on Croatoan. The confusing part is that there's very little DNA evidence supporting that theory, because mm -hmm. it's been 400 years. No. So... They can't, it, it, while we do know what the most likely thing that happened is, there's no way to really prove with Roanoke. Mm -hmm. um, but when you look at the John White map that has that patch on it that we mentioned in the video, that I think is another interesting one that, you know, he tried to patch that up. When you bring in the conflict that was going on with Spain at the time, there are so many factors in the Roanoke story that make it very interesting and very cool as a historian, but it's not super mysterious. Yeah. Of course, there is the fact that they talked about hunting apes in the mountains. Um, I was going to say there's that and the other uh, religious thing that we came yeah. across. That well, I, I would think imagine we across that more and more now, too. Which is interesting. Uh, specifically with the Algonquin hmm. peoples. But, um, you know, that, that whole, the, they're basically, you know, if you've seen the video, you know that we talked about it. They, the, the Croatan had a, a near Abrahamic religion. Hmm. Like, it was 
one creator being who's existed since the beginning of time. Um, a host of lesser divinities that assist that being. Uh, the belief in a an afterlife and a binary, you know, possibility of you either go to a heaven type of place or a hell, mm -hmm. and you have an immortal soul. Like, all of these are very, very similar to Abrahamic religion, and they're not necessarily... They're... they're they're more similar to Judaism than they are to a lot of European pagan pantheons, which is really interesting to me. Yeah. Because they're not as close mm. physically. Yeah. So you got to wonder, you know, where did that come from? When did those beliefs start? Given how long ago we know they were there, you know, was this, did the Templars actually get there 200 years earlier and, you know, tell people about, the christian god you know mm. it, there's a number of possibilities there's a lot of questions that get opened up and they're a lot of fun to investigate but there's not a ton of answers right now no. um with portlock the more i looked into it the less sense it made now it's also far less documented and it's weird but the fact that there are numerous accounts from different people over the course of you know 70 years of something out in the woods hurting people and all that and it's not just coming from you know this one story which is the, when we uh we had the the guy from um what was it anchored not anchorage daily it was uh god what was his name I'm, I'm i'm blanking on it the uh i know who you're talking about was it the guy whose picture i put in with the sunglasses and the yeah uh, darren uh darren smith for yeah. anchorage press he he was talking to sally ash who was the cousin of melania kell who's the one who told the story that really kind of blew the whole port lock thing open and then sally is like oh but my cousin just made the whole thing up to get people to stop asking but that that was in 2009 mm -hmm. and then there's tom larson who his story's from 1981 and it's recorded in 1981 yeah. it's not that they interviewed him in 2009 he told a story from the 1980s no the interview where he tells this story is from 1981 mm. and then on top of that you also have the story from that guy named ed who posted mm. his in 2007 yep so again years before melania um and then of course the story from uh uh Delotz all that was the guy's name yep. uh his version his story is from 1973 so mm. and it was published in 1973 so unless, you know, maybe he did go and talk to Melania herself up in Manuelic, she would have lived there at the time, but, you know, it's, it's, it does, it strikes me as odd that in 2009, they'd say, oh, well, well, she just made the whole thing up, like, as we were sitting there. Yeah. That's what she says in the article. Sally says that, you know, we were translating for her, but what she was saying was, you know, we knew that it wasn't, like, true. She never told, like, you know, we knew she was making it up on the spot. We laughed about it afterwards. I'm like, yeah. Clearly not. Clearly, yeah. clearly, you did not make it up on the spot. Mm. And when you look at again, you know the the Saskets issue from British Columbia. You know it was the same thing where the tribal elders didn't want to talk to J W Burns about their stories because they were worried they were going to be laughed at. So you got to wonder if it's the same kind of thing here. Uh, I don't think Melania is still alive because she was born in. That was another weird detail here. Was I? Uh, like the the article the interview said that her godfather andrew kamluk was one of the people killed but that he was killed in 1931 whereas it says she was born in 1934 hmm. so i think that the interviewer made some that mistakes up, yeah because yeah. it makes more sense that either she was born in 31 and he was killed in 34 mm -hmm. or he was killed in 41 like there yep. there are a number of possibilities there but you know that's that's two villages that we've got and then if you go over to vinland up in uh up in canada mm -hmm. this was established sometime around the year 1000 a.d mm -hmm. by a group of vikings from greenland yep. who you know because eric the red was exiled from everywhere uh his son leaf goes and you know they've heard these stories from fishermen about this this new world to the west they go they find it they settle and we don't know precisely how long they were there it seems like it wasn't more than a few years mm. But as far as the Vikings go, this is the year 1000. Mm -hmm. This is not the end of the Viking Age. It's getting there. We're towards the end. We're, we're in the home stretch. But the lengths they went to to colonize Iceland, Greenland, England, all these different places, mm -hmm. you know, they, they there were a lot of dead Vikings in England. There were a lot of dead Vikings in France, in Ireland, 
A lot of people died colonizing Iceland and Greenland. Greenland was not a very good colony at all. I would imagine no. Um, no. You know, based uh, one of the one of the theories about it is that the part of the reason they had to abandon Greenland was because while they could eat, while there were fish and seals and all that, they couldn't get enough nutrients. So even though they were eating enough, they were starving. Interesting. Like their bodies were not getting the necessary nutrients. That's, so that's gotta be brutal. One of the beliefs for why that colony was banned is the same mm. thing as how if you only eat rabbit, you don't get enough fat. Mm. So you can eat, you can be filling yourself up with rabbit meat, yep. and you will never have the the energy you need. To sustain yourself yeah because it's just not gonna work for you so with vinland it always struck me as odd that the vikings did not pursue it further mm -hmm. now of course the the you know there's we talk about the north sea empire and all of these various uh you know superstructures of viking rulership but for the most part these were you know little bands of explorers you're, you're talking about clan size structures a few mm -hmm. hundred people at most um, you know, you had Viking kingdoms, but they were pretty much limited to Ireland, England, Norway, and Sweden, and Denmark. Yep. They weren't, they, there was no, you know, British empire of the Vikings. Mm -hmm. They didn't all have one coherent goal and base and, and aim. So it, on the one hand, it does make sense that they might say, oh, well, we don't have the resources to go colonize North America, but it seems very weird to me that they would go all the way over there and then not even try to continue down the coast. Yeah. You know, not send more expeditions later on. Why not? You know, what caused people to abandon that one? Mm. A lot of people will just suggest that, you know, they had conflict with the natives and it was hard to get enough food. But Vinland is much further south than Greenland. Mm. It's, you can farm, you can raise cattle, you can raise animals, like... Yeah. And if they went even a little bit further west, they would have ended up on the mainland. Yeah. And it was... But when we think about climate here, you know, th this is further south than Norway, Iceland, Greenland, all of these places. This ca Canadian settlement by the Vikings is further south than all of that. Mm -hmm. So for what reason did they leave? And, you know, why not go back? Yeah. That's probably the part that sticks out to me the most is why didn't they go back? Mm -hmm. Now, there is the, the point to be made that the Vikings based most of their economy on trade. Mm -hmm. So if you're all the way over in, you know, this part of the world, it's a hell of a hike to get back to Europe. Yeah. Especially back then. So they would have had to have multiple posts or they would have had to set up an entire, you know, network of trade stations all down the coast that they could then hit on their way back and forth. It's possible. I can see how on one, you know, you, you might make the argument that it's, it wasn't a, a simple or easy plan, but it was possible. And I think it's, it's just, it strikes me as a little bit odd that they didn't, try it again yeah you know so oh, yeah i see a few super chats there if you want to yeah yeah we can definitely start diving into those uh let's see the first one's from just in case they're relevant you know yeah, yeah the first one's from ryan wake up for two dollars that said started my three hour trek home from work just in time welcome welcome to the ride <laughs> please be safe <laughs> it's a long journey uh zimzilla 99 for 499 said finally catching one of these live welcome thank you uh your boy for 199 said of course as he does pussy. pussy yeah uh jack teeple for 499 said finally got to see a live podcast been watching you guys from the beginning keep up the good work you guys have been killing it thank well, you thank so you. much much appreciated uh daniel teague for 999 said hey hope you guys are doing okay during the philly water contamination i don't know too much about it other than every grocery store around philly is out of water already yeah, not not the best thing. But what? so the Delaware has been contaminated. Well, yeah, we knew that. Well, but like oh, but worse. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah, a bunch of like latex stuff spilled into the river um, from a latex plant up near Bristol. That's all that's really known. They don't know how much got out, and they don't know how bad it necessarily is going to be or how long. But this, is, this has just been a great month or so for. Uh environmental safety yeah yeah we're really just setting the gold standard aren't we killing it uh nmdi uh is welcome to a lodge visitors so i think that's what that means that she uh she joined yeah thank you for joining the, the becoming a member that is one thing you can do is you can watch our videos i believe you can watch them uh ad free if you become a member you should be able to yeah, yeah. um it's five bucks a month um and it helps support the channel yes and you get a free super chat 
Uh, Woosh17 for $5 said, Missouri Boy here. Would love to hear some about the Ozark region. Ooh, I'll have uh, to take a look into that. And then Theoderic the Great. Is that what, <laughs> am I reading that correctly? Yeah, it looks like it's what it says. Fair enough. Uh, ben Krasniak for $10 said, I've decided that I, in fact, will be going feral in the Appalachian Ma Mountains. If you really need to reach me, climb the highest peak and call like a midget three times. Like a midget? I'll what? be with you what in three, mean? four days. I'm unfamiliar with that. What's that? What? I don't know. I don't know why calling would be relevant to that. It, that must have, that, that has to have been an autocorrected kind of thing, right? That, that must have meant something else. Either that. Right? Or it's in fact a joke. <laughs> Possible. Jack Garcia for four ninety nine said Vikings and Bigfoot did some shrooms together. Wouldn't be shocked. That that would that sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. Um get through these guys. Yep. Uh Anna MDI for ten dollars said, I'm a forensic investigator and love putting on lore lodge videos in the background when I'm working mm -hmm. on reports. Appreciate the work and research. That's awesome. Yep. We appreciate that you uh like listening to it while you do your the pain. All right, well, let's let's pop back to the story yeah. for a moment. I just want to get through some of those. But yeah, so, you know, I, I think now that I've kind of gone over the, the general, the gist of those things, um, mm -hmm. maybe should go into the story for anybody who hasn't seen it. For those who don't know, with Roanoke, that was not the first colony, yeah. as I said earlier. There was a 1584 colony um, that was established as a military presence. Mm. So the first attempt was full military. They sent about 600 men. Not all of them made it there for various reasons. Um, there was a, like, you know, undeclared war going on with Spain. People went off privateering. There were all sorts of reasons people didn't all make it all the way to the Roanoke colony. They only planned to leave 69 for mm -hmm. the summer and for, for the, you know, the, the time until the ships returned with more supplies and more colonists. The idea was set up a beachhead, do that. Uh, unfortunately, they got there. They made friends with the Croatan and they... Uh, encountered the Secatan, mm. but then while on an exploring trip, uh, Philip Amatis, one of his guys, uh, you know, misplaced a silver cup. They accused mm. the natives of stealing it. And when the natives would not hand over the silver cup that they probably didn't even have, um, they burned the village to the ground. A, a natural progression. Yeah. It's, it's not a, you know, there were there were other options they could have taken. Punishment punishment did not quite fit the crime. No, but uh, remarkably they were able to smooth it out, and somehow there was not an immediate war. But it shocking definitely set the stage for this to go downhill very quickly. Yeah, and over the course of the next couple of months, you see relations between the Secatan and the colonists deteriorate really quickly. The Secatan were the ones primarily helping the colonists out, mm -hmm. not the Croatan. Uh, and then, you know, while I, it, while all of this is going on, there's also a bunch of political division between the Native Americans on the mainland. So the Secatan under uh, Pemisipan, he, wa he wants to get rid of the colonists. He's not happy about them. They're causing him trouble. Hmm. And they then talk about maybe moving further inland, yep. which would get him, get him out of his hair. Mm-hmm. But he also seems to have been aware of the technological differences and the fact that the, the game that the Secatan were playing was these these Englishmen have technology, they have weapons, they have, you know, finished goods that we don't. Mm -hmm. There are ways that we could work with them to improve our lives and our chances against our enemies. But they also were definitely wary of the fact that the English, this th these were not the only English people. There were more of them across the ocean, and if they liked this place, yep. they were going to send more. So, rather than just letting them settle inland, Pemisipan set up a, uh, a kind of a, I'm trying to think of the right word here, but he he told Grenville and uh, Grenville's men, Ralph Lane, the governor of the colony, Amatis, all these guys, the commanding officers of the first Roanoke colony, that there was a confederation of Native Americans planning to attack them and that they should go in and, you know, if they were going to take him by surprise, they should go in well armed mm -hmm. and they should, you know, make the first strike. Yeah. Now, of course, there was no confederacy of Native Americans planning to attack them until 
Mm-hmm. Pemisopon then went to the Chowanoke under Metatonin mm-hmm. and told Metatonin, hey, just so you know, um, there's going to be a, a party of armed colonists, Europeans, coming for you guys. Uh, you know, they're, they're planning to attack you. You should probably call a war council. So Lane's men and Grenville's men, they get together and they, they armor up and get their weapons and they go. And what they find is the council not expecting to see them there. They quickly take Menatonin and his son prisoner and they ransom Menatonin back. And what Menatonin tells them is that the Misopon was behind the whole thing. Mm. So at this point, they make an attempt to go further inland and explore, but yeah. Pemisopon has reached all the way in and has told everybody the English are hostile and not to help them, even mm. though they, they weren't. Yep. They were just looking for somewhere to live. Yep. Um, and they were looking for gold, copper, and silver. So by the time the, the next fleet of ships to arrive gets there, and I think that was Francis Drake's fleet, um, by the time they get there, this colony is, they are very near death. And what was the stretch of time between? It's only a few months. Really? Yeah. That's honestly, it's crazy how much can change in such a short period of time. Yeah, basically just over the winter. Yeah. They they set up the colony uh, at the end of the summer in uh, 1584. And by 1585, they were, they needed to leave. Yeah. Um, Francis Drake stopped by. He knew the colony was there. He was going to check on it, drop off some supplies, you know, if anybody needed to go back to Britain, take them. And initially, he was actually going to still leave them there Mm. and then just go back to England. Turned out that because of the weather and a number of other factors, they weren't able to do that. And uh, Ralph Lane convinced Francis Drake, just take us all back. Uh, Ironically, the fleet they were waiting for of reinforcements and supplies and all that showed up a few days after they all left, Hmm. commanded by Grenville. Um, Because Grenville had got the fleet there and then went back to England, leaving the whole thing under the command of Ralph Lane. Hmm. So, Grenville gets there, leaves 15 men to guard the fort until more people get back. Turns out those guys got attacked almost immediately. Hmm. Like, pretty much the second they got left there, Hmm. Pemisopon ordered them to be attacked. Hmm. Uh, Two of them were killed... 13 of them managed to escape, but were never seen again. Hmm. A couple years later, John White returns with a number of ships and colonists, except this time, rather than a military colony, he's bringing civilians. Why is he bringing civilians? Because the military thing didn't work out very well. Hmm. So instead of bringing a military force, they thought, all right, let's go. Let's try and fix things and, you know, all that. They get there. They discover the colonists are gone. They go and they... Uh, you know, speak to the Croatan and they're like, what's happening? Where is everybody? The Croatan tell them about how the men who Grenville left were attacked and some of them escaped, but they haven't seen them since. Um, White sets up the colony on Roanoke again. And then they end up getting, they end up attacking uh, Desamongoponki, uh, which is over across the sound, mm-hmm. but the Secatan have abandoned it and they accidentally attack Croatan looters so they managed to smooth it out yet again. Um, <laughs> but what you see is just this kind of constant process of the colonists just cannot get off on the right foot with the natives. Yeah. They just can't do it. Um, and John White ends up being, they ask him to go back to England to ask for supplies. He's the highest ranking. He's the best respected. He has the best shot. Mm-hmm. He goes back, but because of the Spanish Armada, he can't return to Roanoke until 1590. Hmm. And by that point, the colony's gone again. And yeah. that's where they get the, the Croatoan sign on the, the piece of wood. Yep. Uh, and part of the reason we don't know for certain if they went to Croatan, Croatoan Island is because John White was never able to make it to Croatoan Island. Hmm. The, the weather, the, the morale of the men, just the situation. They lost a bunch of ships. They lost, like, one of their captains. Um, he just never was able to get back to Croatoan Island, so he was never able to actually check so everyone thought, oh, well, maybe they just went and intermingled with uh, the Croatan. But then there's the Dare Stone. Mm-hmm. And most of these are definitely fake. One of them, it's believed is authentic. And that one was found closer to that secondary location for where the colony was supposed to move. Because mm-hmm. they were going to move the colony inland to a spot marked on, believed to be a spot marked on uh, John White's map. They said they were going to head about 50 miles inland uh, on this one specific sound. And if you look at the map, that's basically, you know, right where they would have ended up. Yeah. The Dare Stone was found near that point. Mm-hmm. 
so that that leaves a different question. Mm -hmm. Why do they write Croatellan if they went to Avoca? Well, and for those who may not be full up on that, uh, remind me what the Dare Stones are and the one versus the sure. other ones and everything like that. Uh, a, a stone was found that had some information written on it in, you know, Victorian English mm -hmm. that basically said, uh, you know, uh, maybe, we can find, maybe I can find the exact one in here. Um, I could probably read it if I can grab it. I just need to snag it. Historical mysteries. Roanoke. Come on. We're getting there. I can go through a couple of the super chats in the meantime. Sure. Cool. Uh, Lila for $2 said it was the Sasquatchy oh, case closed stream over. Damn. You know what? They're right. I mean, if only we'd listen sooner. <laughs> But really quickly, just so I can get this yeah, part of my train of thought. The the stone that's believed to be legitimate reads, Father, soon after you go for England, we came hither. Only misery and war two years. Above half dead, airy two year more from sickness, being four and twenty. Savage with a message of a ship unto us. Small space of time, they aff uh, the affright of revenge ran all away. We believe it, not you. So what that means is that the natives came to them and said that a ship had approached. They yep. didn't believe that it was John White's ship. They were worried it was the Spanish, mm. so they didn't go out to, you know, let anybody know that they were there. Yep. Um, we believe it, not you. Soon after, the savages said spirits angry. Sudden murder all save seven. What that means is that the Native Americans decided that, you know, the... The spirits were they, they believed that the spirits were angry with them yeah um that the the supernatural realm was upset and that they had to get rid of the colonists mm. to appease them um so what this says is that the natives basically came upon their their settlement whether that was at roanoke or over in the new settlement mm -hmm. it seems to me that it may have been the new settlement um because it says that they uh they buried everybody four miles east of the river mm. where the stone was. Yep. So the stone was obviously not found on Roanoke. Yep. So it seems that, you know, maybe what happened was they went to Croatan or Croatoan, stayed there for a little while, and then hopped their way up to what is now Avoca, North Carolina, mm. and then were attacked there by the Powhatan. Mm. Um, she goes on to say, Mine child, Ananias too, her husband, slain with much misery, buried all near four miles east of this river upon small hill. Names writ all there on rock, put this there also. Savage show this unto you, and hither we promise you to give great plenty presents. Uh, EWD, which is Elizabeth Dare's um, initials. Yep. So Elizabeth Dare, of course, the mother of Virginia Dare, the first English woman born in the colonies. Mm -hmm. Um if that stone is legitimate, then it tells us that they did eventually make it over to the mainland. Yeah. They did set something up and probably right on that spot on the map where John White said that they would be. Um, Which makes sense. Exactly. It makes complete sense. Who killed them? Of course, Elizabeth Dare was not educated enough or involved enough in the day to day life and communication with the natives because that's just not what her role was yeah for her to know necessarily the difference between you know the powahatan the secatan the croatan the chesapeake she probably even the the only people who probably would have been able to differentiate mm -hmm. would have been like john white thomas harriet ralph lane the people who were actually going out and having conversations with these different groups yeah another part of the problem is these all all of these group, groups spoke carolina algonquin languages so to them to the english the, these all would have sounded like the same language they would not have been able to recognize the difference so it's also likely that well if they got in conflict with one tribe they were probably just going to think that every tribe was also that tribe yeah so they had no way of really you know it, it was doomed from the start yeah with with the numbers they had when you think about the colonies that eventually succeed they're much bigger, they're much better funded, they are sent with both arms and civilians. Like, we start to see a, 
a method that works, but it also, it seems like they really just did not realize how difficult it was going to be to colonize Roanoke between the natives, the weather, the dis the distance between England and the New World. They just at no point had a chance. Mm. And even with Jamestown, which eventually is successful, um, they still struggle a lot. There's famines, there's cannibalism, you know. <laughs> that early American colonial period is is tough and yeah. it finally starts to take off at the end of the 17th century. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you don't really see, like, the, the, the colonies as we know them don't really start blossoming until the end of the 17th century, the 1600s. What was kind of the turning point? Just population growth? Um, there, there's a number of things, but the technological advancements, mm -hmm. weaponry is a huge one, mm -hmm. because one of the big things that helped was the, the musket. Mm -hmm. As the musket became less of an archivist-type weapon, like mm -hmm. a, a mounted rifle. Mm -hmm. Um, you can basically think of it this way. It's like, it, it's a similar difference between going from the M1 Garand mm -hmm. to the M16. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, do they technically do the same thing? Yes. Is one of them considerably lighter and easier to use? Also, yes. So just little differences like that over time. This isn't my tip, my period of expertise historically, yeah. but it was a lot of little things like that. Um, you know, the eventually the end of the, the real end of the medieval period the real beginning of the gunpowder age, just economic conditions are another one because once they kind of figured out what was over in the new world, mm -hmm. people were a lot more willing to invest. That makes sense. So it's easier to invest, invest into the known versus yeah. the unknown. In order for the English to have succeeded in colonizing the new world, they probably would have needed to send fleets twice as large and organized for supply ships every three months. And instead, they were kind of organizing for supply ships every six months to a year mm. and sending over groups of a few hundred men. Mm. These Native American villages had thousands. Not all of them. But there were, there were Native American towns and, and urban centers that had thousands and thousands of people in them. Even with, you know, even with guns and steel armor, when you're outnumbered by that much, yeah. you're you're just screwed. Yeah. You're never going to succeed. So that I think with Roanoke, you get to the point where it's it's not really a, a it's, it's definitely not paranormal. It's not supernatural. It's not mysterious in that sense. But it the, I think that the real mystery there is what exactly happened. We have a good idea what happened. Yeah. You know. Um just not definitive details. Exactly. When we go over to the port lock situation, it's kind of the opposite. We uh, have very few details mm -hmm. as opposed to having a ton of details yeah. about Roanoke. There's, there's, it's kind of funny. There's no details about how Roanoke was abandoned. Mm. There are no details as to how port lock was founded. Yeah, but we have... We know a lot about how Roanoke was founded and not what happened to it. We know very little about how Port Lock was founded, and we have a good idea what happened to it. Yeah. So, it's also weird that it's it's that recent, and there were people alive who remembered it even 10, 20 years ago. Port and we Lock, never, mean... Yeah, we never really got a good answer on it. Yeah. Um, I'd love to go there. I would love to check it out for myself. It'd be sweet. Yeah, it'd be really, you know, interesting to see just the remnants of mm -hmm. what potentially happened and find, you know, some of those missing puzzle pieces that those who are just kind of speculating from our position yep. don't get the opportunity to see. Yeah, and with I uh, with specifically the case of of Portlock. One of the things I found most interesting about it was the the plausibility mm -hmm. of it yeah you know a lot of the time there's if, if you're dealing with a story of something that happens close to larger populations or something like that it's there's other confounding variables with port lock it there's really two possible explanations here either i mean i guess i'll just i'll tell the port lock story from start to finish um sometime in the early 1900s the village of port lock is founded it's also called port chatham because the the bay is Port Chatham Bay, and then there's a Portlock Glacier, like mm -hmm. it's named after Nathaniel Portlock, a uh, British sea captain. 
but it's founded sometime in the early 1900s. In 1905, uh, Cannery Records, according to the Anchorage Daily News, mm-hmm. um, or it might have been Alaska Daily, I can't remember which exactly, but according to one of the Alaska newspapers, the cannery that was there, that was the main industry in the town. Yep. Was basically, everyone either worked at this cannery or worked at a general store supporting the cannery. Yep, or like um, a lumber mill. Yeah, in, in 1940, like there were 31 people there. Yeah. Like, it was a small village. Yeah. Um, so cannery gets started in 1905 it's abandoned they they all everyone goes home for the season because of something in the woods hmm. that's it that's what we get yeah very, now very that specific could be polar bear yeah could be it's a little far south for a polar bear could be a grizzly bear um but in that case you, you would kind of assume that if like if it were being abandoned because of a grizzly bear attacking people mm-hmm. that they would say there's a grizzly bear attacking people? You would think, yeah. Yeah, a, ba- a bear... The grizzlies kill people in a very specific way. Mm-hmm. Like, they, they eat you while you're alive. They bury your body in a cache. Like, they, they do... They are predictable animals. We learned this doing the Bart Schleyer video. Yes. Um, they, they have a method of doing things. So mm-hmm. if it were a grizzly, you would assume that they would have said, there's a grizzly bear attacking people. Instead, what we get is there is something in the woods. Uh, the 1930s roll around. And people start having their heads bashed in with logging equipment that nobody was around to move. You have gold miners who go missing. Mm-hmm. You have bodies that show up ripped to shreds in the in the lagoon. Like something, according to these stories, was really messing with Portlock. It was not happy that there were people there. Yeah, and it wasn't that people were being you know taken out of their homes. It was somebody would go off to go hunting for sheep mm-hmm. out in the woods because they had dull sheep up there. Somebody would go out hunting and not come back. And then sometime later, a body would turn up in the lagoon, torn up in ways that a bear or a wolf simply wouldn't do. Yeah. Like. Just too excessive. Yeah. It seemed like it was not about eating people, mm. but about sending a message yeah. is, is what these stories say. And so, you know, in 1940, in 1940, the U.S. census actually happens in Portlock for the first time. Yep. So there are 31 people in 1940. By 1949, there is one person. It is the postmaster. Hmm. But it's not like the town was gradually abandoned over 10 years. Every story I read is that everybody left at once. Yeah. Just 1949, they said, we're sick of this, we can't do it anymore, we're out, we're gone. So either there was, in fact, something... In the woods, mm-hmm. killing people, which to, to, again could have just been people. Yeah, that is a possibility. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be something supernatural; just something that maybe you wouldn't describe as natural, like a bear. Or something exactly. Like that. Yeah, there's a number of possibilities that are in between supernatural and bear. Yes. <laughs> one there's of one of which is people. A lot of options. Yeah. yeah. So. Or it really was a practical economic thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it was just a practical economic thing, why did everybody leave at exactly the same time? Why are there so many stories from people who either went there or lived there who who don't think that's what it is? You know, why is it that, you know, we, we get Melania's story and, and Sally, they they talk about Nantinuk, the basically the Alaskan Bigfoot, yeah. as being a solitary, gentle creature that just wants to be left alone mm-hmm. and say that, it, and, you know, Sally says, oh, Melania made the whole story up. It never actually hurt anybody. You know, that was just to get people to stop asking questions. Yeah. Then why are there so many other stories about it? What about Ed's story regarding the old Native American man, the EM, when he was being when he was working as an EMT? Yep. He's transporting this old Native American man to a hospital. Uh, they're talking about hunting. He mentions Dogfish Bay. Native American guy sits up, grabs him by the shirt, and says, "Did it bother you?" Mm-hmm. Um, or sorry, did you see it? Or he said, "Yeah, did it bother you?" Yep. And Ed says, "Yes." And he goes, "Did you see it?" And Ed says, "No, you know, no, no." Like. Native American, he asked the Native American guy, did you see it? The guy goes, no, my brother did. Yeah. Which, we get the same story from Sally. She didn't see it, but her brother did. Yeah. So. Interesting little pairing there. Yeah, why are there so many people with, it's it's an interesting um, dichotomy, I guess, because you've got, on the one hand, these people who very firmly believe this thing exists. Mm-hmm. 
And on the other hand, you've got them claiming that it is absolutely not responsible for port lock and that it's just economic factors. Yeah. Um, part of the problem is that we have so little information from port lock that we actually don't know if it was just economic factors. There's, it's totally plausible that it would be, you know, there's just nothing there. Yeah. But at the same time, it could both not be true, I guess, is, you know, it could, could it not be that poor economic factors and then the killer Bigfoot in the woods with the last straw? I mean, and honestly, it makes sense considering a lot of things in life are a compilation of different, yeah. you know, reasons for something to happen. So, yeah, for everybody to kind of be struggling in this small little village, essentially, mm -hmm. and then something starts happening where, like, people are getting killed mm -hmm. in the woods, you're like, I think that's in the, enough reason yeah. to go. Yeah, like, th That's what I wonder is, you know, even if it wasn't, like, Bigfoot or something, yeah, was something attacking them? Because... It would seem so. Because it makes sense that, you know, the only person left would be a federal employee. Yeah. Like, who has no choice but to stay there. Yeah. Um, and then he's gone by 1951. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, you look at 1973, we're just 20, about 20 years after it's abandoned. Um, uh, Dolitzall, the guy we were talking about, what was it, Richard Dolitzall? That Robert, sounds right. Robert Dolitzall, something or like that. Something like that, yeah. Um, he and his buddy are sailing and they stop by Portlock. Mm hmm. And again, this is only 20 years after. Totally abandoned. They described as completely empty. Mm -hmm. um, they go, they head up to Nanwalek, and they're exchanging stories with people who live there, and they're told about the monster of Portlock. In 1973. Mm -hmm. So if Melania was making it up, when did she make it up? Yeah. Who made it up? Did she make it up? Or was she telling an old wives' tale? Was this an urban legend? Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the Portlock story, uh, like, definitively proves that Bigfoot exists. I don't think it does. Um, but I do think that the, uh, on the one hand, the people who say that it was definitely Bigfoot, I think are jumping the gun. Mm -hmm. But the people who say that it was just economic factors, I think also are, are missing the fact that that's, it's a lot to pack up and move your entire life. Oh, yeah. Just to go live not that far away. I mean, uh, look up, look up uh, how far Nanwellick is. We'll do. Also, um, for those who may have seen the original video we did on this yes. and are wondering where the... Oh, the Kushnikov? Yeah, yeah, where the presence of that is. Can we explain how that yeah, sure. does or doesn't fit in? So, um, when I first was looking into it, I could not find anything aside from the, the quote-unquote Bigfoot. Part of the reason for this is that uh, up until last August, um, this channel was not a full-time gig. For me, mm. I did not have 40 hours, 50 hours a week to research, so I didn't. Um, yeah, are you? You haven't pulled up, I think. Yeah, hang on. I will. I believe that's Port Lock down there. But let's do directions to Port Lock. Well, Port Lock's probably not going to well. Oh, Port Lock, well, we did. Yeah. Yeah. So Namwellick is, as the crow flies, Aiden's getting us the info here. 11 and a half miles from Port Lock. Yep. Which in 1949 in Alaska is not a simple journey. <laughs> no, especially... it's also not a journey that can easily be made on land because there's mountains the whole way. Yes. So you basically have to go by water, which would actually be easier than going by land. Um, you know, it's just, is it possible? Sure. Um, there's also still a settlement at Dogfish Bay. Yeah. Like, I don't know. My In my opinion with Port Lock, it was probably a mix of factors. I think it was, I, I think maybe something weird did happen there. And maybe we're looking at a case of one person turned up dead. Yeah. And then it was suddenly more. Uh, part of the issue is that at this point in time, Alaska was not yet a U.S. state. Mm. Uh, it, it was Alaska became a state in what, uh, 59? Let's look it up. I want to say. Yeah, 59. Yep. Yeah, so there's not a ton of record keeping, especially from such a small municipality. Yeah. If we had it, maybe. Um, I do wonder, you know, when they left, did they take everything from the cannery with them? Did they leave records behind? You know, if somebody went and did a little bit of urban exploring, could they maybe find some of it? Um, 
I'm sure they could find some at least. Oh, I think so. But yeah, with Portlock, I think we're looking at maybe a situation where you had poor economic conditions compounded with maybe a grizzly bear in the area that was attacking people, or maybe there was something supernatural going on, or maybe there were a, a tribe up in the hills that was not happy about, you know, American settlement. Yeah. Granted, the people there were Russo Aleuts, so they weren't like full blooded white people. Yeah. Uh but And you may want to like for those who aren't aware differentiate what that means and what Russo Aleuts are. Oh yeah. So uh a, a Russo Russo Aleuts would be people who were mixed race Russian and uh Aleutian. Hmm. So the Aleutian Islands, the Native Americans in that region um mixed in with the russian colonists mm -hmm. and developed their own sort of mixed race group up in that area mm -hmm. um so it it wouldn't quite be the same thing as just transplanting a whole bunch of russians or anglo-saxon americans something like that right up into alaska yeah. instead the people that would have been there would have been mixed race yeah. um so likely less probably less likely to be involved in open hostility with native americans simply on the basis of not being the same yeah. because they did share family history uh but you know you never know exactly what was going on and in, in 1931 1949 like that time period in alaska it's it's wild enough that there could be tribes out there that were still hostile yeah um so there's there's a number of options uh with with portlock i personally think that it was yeah, I think it was a mix of factors. I think that there probably was maybe a serial killer or another tribe or a, a grizzly bear. And you know what? I'm at this point open to the idea of something Bigfoot related. <laughs> probably not like the, you know, giant hairy gorilla suit dude we see, mm -hmm. but maybe something closer to like, you know. Saskatchewan's yeah. Story. What we get from British Columbia where there's yeah. just human beings out there that are on average larger. Yep. Well, considering how much we have unintentionally encountered the whole Bigfoot Sasquatch yeah. thing in the most recent stories, it's an understandable assumption. Right. I think so. Oh. All right, you want to? Uh, it's it's eight. Should we go to super chats? Yeah, let's go to super chats yeah. and get that section going. To answer uh, Kelly's question, Archie is with his grandparents tonight. He's yes. keeping uh keeping their dog company. She's and, not feeling great. Oh. Yeah, she's old. And then she's fourteen. That's actually relevant for is is uh. Uh, comment question remember for 15 months thanks mm -hmm. it is by the way uh y'all are stinky months. but still hello tell archibald i love him i request an awoo is celebration on getting a new job please and thank he, you he will awoo for you next week I promise. yes yeah when he's here we will celebrate your new job congratulations uh kellen the official data for 499 said what's the chance of a studio tour uh it would be a very disappointing tour we're in a room that's maybe 10 by 10 yeah it's, <laughs> it's also like not totally complete yet yeah we're still working so, on it yeah those i will say those blankets are a far more effective system than what we had before yeah just in terms of like time up and, yeah. and things like that yeah yeah we used to coat the uh the walls with acoustic panels yeah um, like this stuff yeah like what you see right there uh this time we did the corners with those and just use sound blankets for the the big ones just move, big moving blankets yep and it it saves a lot of time uh also, just in relation to having to considering how many times have you have you moved since we started this? This is our fourth studio space. Yeah. So at this point, it's kind of like it's just saving time, mm -hmm. not only for the initial up, but once I buy a house, we'll put it in the basement, and then it'll never move ever again. I would say that's a good plan. Uh, let's see where. We so uh and then next up was norberto rodriguez jr for five dollars saying maybe harsh storms hit the area made it harder to move south and maybe they could not handle the heat of the south i think in reference to roanoke in reference to roanoke yeah uh yeah it's definitely possible the weather was not not helpful for the colonization effort uh but croatoan is so close to roanoke yeah that i find it very difficult to believe that they could not have made it there yeah um especially because they they'd made it there before now storms did actually end up blowing them off course when they were trying to return um when they were trying to get down to the bahamas hmm. but just going between roanoke island and croatoan island it especially considering you'd have to get blown past the outer banks out to sea yeah 
it just doesn't seem likely to me that the problem was a storm mm -hmm. unless they did get in the ship and then try to sail and it sank. Yeah. But as far as I'm aware, there have been no shipwrecks unaccounted for that have been detected in that area, um, which, you know, maybe we just haven't found it yet, it's but there's a number of shipwrecks that we know about. Mm -hmm. We know where they are because they're recorded yeah. in these, these journals from these trips, but there's no, we have, we have, as far as I know, we have yet to find a ship that would match the proper design mm -hmm. for the time period to be a ship that would have tried to take them from Roanoke to Croto. Hmm. Uh, then we got uh, just some dude for two dollars saying, "I'm from Alaska. Any questions I can try and answer?" Uh, I pr I personally don't have any off the top of my head. Fair, yeah. If I think of any, I'll let you know. But I think is moment, it expensive yeah. to live there? <laughs> I would imagine it is to an extent. Because I don't know, it seems pretty. How much farming is up there? Probably not a ton. A yeah. So food's probably it's pretty. It's really the Norway of America. In many senses, yeah. yes. Uh, ben Krasniak for $5 said, Sorry about the feral chat. I stubbed my toe. <laughs> I'm fine now. Well, we're good to hear that. Go ahead. Uh, also, Midget was the first thing I thought of. Yes, I meant Midget. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Agamemnon. You can't say that word on television. That's like saying the N word. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. And here's how I know that. <laughs> You're saying midget, and you won't even say what the N word is. Exactly. <laughs> uh, John Mulaney is oh, all time, all time great comic. Uh, Agamemnon. Not all time great person, from what I understand, but all time great comic. Yeah, I never really kept up on any of that stuff. I probably should have. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Agamemnon's gym bag for $10 said, there are plenty of ghost towns in the good old U.S. of A. Isn't it feasible that just, that people just got up and left as a group when they got going, when they got, when the going got too tough and the location they selected just wasn't worth it? Um. I'm not sure if you're talking specifically about roanoke or port lock here but uh just more of a general or if it's just in general yeah mm -hmm. that's also a possibility um it's the the weird part is the if the story is to be believed they all left at once usually a ghost town is the result of several years mm -hmm. to even decades of people just slowly leaving now of course it depends on how many people to begin with yeah like there's there's several towns in pennsylvania i'd consider ghost towns that still have people there um, but Fair. yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's like I said, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that it was natural. You know, they just decided to leave for economic reasons, mm. but it does seem, it strikes me as a little odd. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, you, you don't put that much effort into building something, you know? Yeah. Lucario Flair for $5 said, Glad to catch a stream. Any chance of video or a deep dive of the Vatican and what they're keeping protected from the public? Secrets and all that. That's definitely a Glad you question. Stream, any chance of video do you have? Part of the issue with that is they do a damn good job of keeping their stuff locked up. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be kind of hard to get the information. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's the, some of the more common knowledge stuff I definitely can talk about, like the donation of Constantine. Uh, which is a well-known fraudulent document. Um, could also talk about the Dictatus Pape, which was not fraudulent, so to speak, but it was definitely not theologically sound. Um, there, there were a number of attempted power grabs by the Catholic Church during the Middle Ages, uh, and so they were actually rather successful most of the time. Um, I and mean, I could just, I could ease, it would be very easy to do a video on all the things the Catholic Church has done wrong over the years. <laughs> Extraordinarily easy. Uh, I'm sure that'd be a long video. Yeah, we might lose all of our Catholic followers. Um, well, I was or they might Catholic. stop being Catholic, but... Uh, <laughs> Begome uh, Orthodox. Unintentionally converting people. Yeah. Uh, Christine Pembino Bennett from 1999. Mom. Howdy. Uh, love the new studio. Thank you. We're doing our best to make it look... It's getting there. Solid. That solid. is real wood, by the way. It is. That is real wood. Individual paneling. That he drilled together. I did. I, I, there was possibility of just doing plywood and things like that, but I just, I saw the planks and I was like, it just, it's going to look better. It's going it to, it's, it's, you know, it, it's going to be more sturdy. So it was yeah, worth it. It was worth it. We built the first wall of the lodge more to come. Uh, NC Squatch for $1. 
Thank you. <laughs> uh, Agamemnon's gym bag for $2 said, Postman was a cannibal mystery Saul. Wait, Kat said Aiden, I need to know how that's spelled, but I don't know what she's referencing. Nor do I. Can, can you be more clear? Could you be more specific? Or are you talking about the Grohler bear again? <laughs> Did you see that one earlier? No. Uh, the, Is this in the same family as Glizzy Bear? I think so. Or Gritty Bear. Gritty Bear? <laughs> Grohler Bear. We should do a Gritty Lore video. We should, we should partner with the Flyers. And do yeah, we should. Video. We absolutely should. Hey, Philadelphia Flyers, if you're interested. We have a proposition for you. Yeah. Are you propositioning Gritty? You're a bold man. I mean, I feel like it'd be I heard rude you not... had survived. I feel like it'd be rude not to. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, Norbert Rodriguez Jr. for $5 said, Poor Locke possibly had a 30 days of night scenario uh, and were being picked off by something that wanted to hurt them. Uh, Alaska, I mean, it is Alaska. They would have periods where it's dark for a lot of the time. I don't know if Port Locke is far enough north to be in the spot where you get permanent night. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Um, I don't know, geographically. Let me look it up if you want to get to the next, uh... Um, where does the sun ever rise? In Alaska. There we go. Uh... Trying to find, uh, can you just search Arctic Circle? I'm sure you can. Arctic Circle Latitude. That's Norway. <laughs> but you should be able I to. I guess it doesn't show it directly on the map. No, let me see. Well, it'll show us the latitude line. See? What is that? Well, if the latitude lines would come back. Is it th All right. uh, 30? So no. it's. Why is it not showing me the grid anymore? I don't know. All right. Well, it's at. Can I play? Uh, it's 6613, basically. So oh, what is here. Dictatus Popeye? Dictatus Popeye? Yeah. Oh. How, how do you spell that? Um. Ah, oh, God. Good question. Um, Dictatus <laughs> Pape. It's uh D I C T A U T U S space P A P A E. Um, where's the Kenai Peninsula? It's a compilation, um, compilation of twenty seven statements of authority claimed by the Pope that was included yep. in Pope Gregory the Seventh's register under the year ten seventy five. So yeah, what's the deal with that book? Uh, it's just another one of the things that they did that was really screwed up. Got it. Uh, yeah, so we are a little bit too south to be permanent night here. Got it. Um, so up, I mean, I will say, like, not very far up is permanent night. It's like... And how long does that last? Is that a month? Is that like two, three months? Uh, I think it's three months out of the year that the sun doesn't rise. Yeah, so you'd have to get basically all the way up to like gates of the Arctic National Park to get to a permanent night situation. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you're looking at... Uh, sorry, that's the wrong one. I think. No. Cat says she's calling it Dickie Pops from now on, just an FYI. Oh, boy. <laughs> Can't say I'm shocked. Me neither. Yeah, so we're like 500 miles off. Yep. For, for it to be that. Um, I'm going to pull up the next one in sure. a second. Uh, next one was from Creativa Artly for four ninety nine, saying, Every time I heard Ed in the original video, I kept looking around because my stepdad's name is Ed, and I'm like, when did he go Bigfoot hunting? <laughs> be, be a wild kind of way to find out. Imagine yeah. those two worlds colliding. 
Uh, Woosh17 for $5 said, Stories of Cryberry, Crybaby Bridge in many Ooh, states, yeah, but one. told here in the Ozarks, too. Y'all are great, solid dudes, and Archie is the goodest of boys. Do you want to add a... Uh, New Weird Bible when? Uh, Weird Bible should be Tuesday. Hmm. Should be. I make no promises, but it should be Tuesday. Should be Tuesday. Um, I have yet to hear back from the goon. Mm. So he usually gets back to me like day of. Fair. The man um, lives a busy life. He does. He does. Uh, Agamemnon's gym bag for $5 said, If Tartaria doesn't exist, where does tartar sauce come from? Checkmate. He didn't put this word, but I'm putting atheists in there just because why not? Checkmate atheists. <laughs> um, you know what? You got me there. I actually <laughs> don't know where tartar sauce comes from. I I have no idea if it's related to the region known as Tartaria. It, that's a great question, actually. Right. We're going to have to look that up now, aren't we? Yeah. In the meantime, uh, Norbert Rodriguez Jr. for $2 said, I meant the Viking settlement. Oh, well, we're going to have to figure out what he was talking about before. <laughs> um, uh, all right. Tartar sauce uh, originated in France. Shocking. Tartar sauce is mainly made from mayonnaise with pickles, capers, herbs, and in some recipes, hard-boiled eggs or lemon juice. Interesting. Hmm. The more you know. Mm -hmm. uh, your boy for one ninety nine said, "Pussy?" Question mark. Wait, can you go see if there's another Norberto Rodriguez one so I can figure out what he was saying? Uh, yeah, it's from down here. Oh, there we go. Um, no, it can't be that one because he uh, maybe not. Uh, this one. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I see that what you're makes saying sense. now. Uh, it was in relation to the storms for those of you who didn't just look there, at the screen. Yeah, right. there were uh there were Viking colonies as far south as Sicily. Um and they also fought in at North Africa and the Middle East, um, under the Roman emperors. Hmm. So I, I would be I, I would think it's unlikely that it would have been a heat issue. Probably not. And then, even if yeah. it were, then they could have just headed further west. Yeah. Instead of south. Or gone north. That's a good point. Uh, surprisingly dynamic anime. I can't see the rest of your username. Right. Sorry. Uh, for one ninety nine said, have you considered visiting Portlock? I would love to. It's just very far away. It is rather, rather difficult to get, to, get to, to. Yeah. Like we'd probably have to charter a private plane to actually get to Portlock. Yeah. Or from like do a multi day hike. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be a lot. Uh, Mental Hedgehogs for 199 said, Aiden, help Bigfoot's broken into my house. Ah, uh, well, I mean, you know, maybe offer him some milk and cookies. Works for Santa. Don't assume malice unless they're actively trying to hurt you. Yeah, maybe he's just hungry. Yeah, could be. Could be just wanting a friend. Uh, Steve Lyons for $3. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Greg Turner for $20 said, Have you heard anything about light people? I saw what was essentially the opposite of a shadow person, a totally white human figure during broad daylight. I was at my family's cabin in the Huron uh, Manistee State Forest in Michigan. I definitely heard of people experiencing that kind of thing where they saw a figure that appeared to be made out of pure white light. Mm -hmm. um, can't say I have strong opinions because I've only ever read like, you know, just eyewitness accounts. Yeah. But I can look into it. Yeah, worth looking into. Hunter Ferrero or Ferrero. Ferrero? Probably. Ferrero, pro I'm going to hope that's Ferrero. If not, I'm sorry. Say like Ferrero. <laughs> For $5 said, you guys are cool people. Well, thank you. Thank you, Hunter. We weren't. You're cool as well. We still technically aren't, but it's fine. <laughs> we're getting there. We're living life and we're We've been, I've been interested again. in this stuff my entire life. It only became cool recently. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You're on the cutting edge. Exactly. Uh, Kellen, the official data for four ninety nine said, Growler bears are the result of polar bears and grizzly bears interbreeding. I didn't know that happened. Interesting. I'm going to look that up now. Is that actually a thing? It is one of those things no. that like could potentially exist or not. Oh, Archie. Archie's apparently watching the show right now. We love it. For, for those who would like to see. <laughs> That's adorable. Are you looking up growler bears? Yep. Grizzly polar bear hybrid. They call them the Grizzler? No way. The Grizzler? No way. The Pizzly Bear? New favorite thing in existence. Occurrences in the wild. Uh, eight, several suspected sightings and eight confirmed cases. Um, hmm. 
Sister species often occupy adjacent regions. Direct contact has not been the norm because polar bears hunt, breed, and sometimes even make maternity dens on sea ice where brown bears have an overwhelmingly terrestrial lifestyle. Wow, so I guess just occasionally they randomly mate with each other? I guess. Yeah. yeah. They're both bears and generally the same It's not super surprising. It's yeah. just like... Just one of those things I would think where, they'd fight each other, you know? Exactly. It's just one of those things where, like, you don't think about it happening, but then once it is presented to you, it's like, okay, I guess that makes sense. I just wouldn't have thought about that happening in and of itself. Yeah. Uh, and then your boy for four ninety nine currently listening while stocking Bussy at Walmart. Keep up the good work. Aiden, please say it in a funny way. Bussy. I didn't know they carried that at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> what aisle is that in? No. <laughs> Uh, is that uh, legal? Probably not. I feel like that would break several laws about trafficking. I think so as well. Uh, Shook for $5. Said, Just popping in to say hi. Planning to send y'all an email someday on a weird yellow house in my hometown with a basement that's not always there. Send the email. <laughs> Anybody who wants to send us emails about encounters or anything like that, we're going to be starting to do something with those there. moving forward. Mm -hmm. So if you want to hear this guy talk about your encounters and potentially help you try and figure out what exactly you may have seen, witnessed, or experienced. Yeah, we plan on doing a mailbag do kind of kind of deal. Yep. Also, I am planning on opening up a P.O. box for people who are interested in sending fan mail. It's obviously yeah. not required, but some people have asked, and we figured we might as well send it up. I'd give you my address, but I probably shouldn't. Yes. It's it's a smart thing to not give out your address as frequently as you can. Yeah. They already know what town I live in. Yeah, that's fair. Did I tell you that uh, I was at um, Molly's, I want to say, last weekend? Mm -hmm. It's probably karaoke. I feel like it wasn't this past Thursday, but the Thursday before. Okay. Um, and... I, I kept seeing some girl look at, looking at me mm -hmm. um, from across the room. Um, and, she, like, she, like, like looked at her, I guess it was her boyfriend, looked at her boyfriend, like, kind of pointed. And I was like, oh, what is that about? And eventually, a few minutes later, she walks over and she was like, hi, I just want to tell you that, like, me and my boyfriend love your podcast. And no I was way. Like, no way. That's awesome. <laughs> Why is it always at Molly's? <laughs> Yeah, the well, only place I ever get recognized. Oh. That's so interesting. Yeah, but it was it was fun. It's it's fun when you have somebody come up and they recognize, you know, what you do in public. Oh yeah, it's yeah. gotta be nice and rewarding to some extent. Yeah. All right. And then Or Isaiah. <laughs> Why? Because he doesn't have anywhere public to go I near him. <laughs> Jeez, you went to a place and they had his like U2s, his like the figurine of him. Oh really? Yeah. It no was, way. like sitting on a shelf oh, at like a hilarious. restaurant. God. I was I remember like the first the first time I got recognized outside of like this local local area. Yeah. One time it happened in Philly, which was funny. I was just crossing the street. I was on a first date and uh, I was crossing the street and some girl rolls down her window and goes, Are you the guy from the Lore Lodge? And I was like Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. <laughs> uh yeah, there was that. Um but no, when we were down in Tennessee, I uh, it was after you had left, but Isaiah and I went to go get uh, lunch. And we went down to this little cafe, like, burger place that was uh, down the mountain from where we were staying. And the server, you know, one of the servers kind of, like, kept looking at Isaiah for, like, 10 minutes while we were in there. Finally walks up and is like, hey, you know, I don't mean to bother you, but are, are you Wendigoon? <laughs> um, and Isaiah's like, yeah, yeah, I am. But, of course, I'm sitting there just kind of, like, chuckling to myself. Yeah. That. And he turns to me and he goes, and you're the guy from the Lore Lodge, right? And I looked at Isaiah and I'm like... <laughs> and he goes, oh, yeah, it starts early. <laughs> He's like, welcome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, we got three more, and yeah. then we'll probably start yeah. to close down. But uh, Eggman Mom's Gym Bag for $6.09. Love the unique and original monetary dollar amount. Uh, awesome. Might actually watch PCC with yous on it. When oh, is yeah. it? Uh, it is Friday at 3 p.m., I want to say. And what is this? Yeah, uh, Pop Culture Crisis. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, nice. For those of you who are interested in watching that, uh, I will warn you, it is a culture show that does end up uh, going, going. it is a culture show that's about politics as well. Mm. Um, so, you know, j just be aware that it, it there there will be politics and I will probably be one of the more liberal people on the show. Mm. So, 
be aware of that. Um, if you've been watching the channel long enough, you understand why it's kind of funny when I say I'll be one of the more liberal people on the show. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know, if you want to, if you want to catch that, tune in and watch it. Um, I'm super excited to be going on there. Yeah, uh, it that'll be, be a fun one. Yeah. Um, you know, hoping to talk about the the missing four on one phenomenon and all of that stuff should be should be a fun show. I feel like you know it's it's a good opportunity to kind of get on there and talk about something really cool mm -hmm. <laughs> that that you don't usually get to get to encounter with um, you know political talk shows and things like that. Because I I've gone on a few now and there was only one where they didn't ask me about the you know paranormal stuff and the unsolved you know disappearances and those things and i uh, that that was pka mm. was they like they brought me on and they like didn't ask me about anything i actually know about and yeah. just insisted i talk about like russia yeah i was like okay <laughs> yeah, it was, it was kind of weird my mom says they just sent me a video of archie howling oh nice do we have it we, we do, do. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he's adorable. He's a good boy. He's probably going to freak out because he's watching right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good boy. He's probably yeah. just going to be howling for like yeah. five minutes. He's going to be howling with himself. Oh, that'll be great. Uh, Kellen, the official data for 199 said, Why? Me? Obviously, official if it comes from me. <laughs> Uh, your boy said uh, for 189. Don't worry, it's just Windowsy. Which fair and valid, I guess. All right, let's uh, let's let's wrap this up. Yeah, with these last couple here, mainly because yep. I have heartburn. Yes, fair. Uh, we'll call this one the last <laughs> yeah. one from Norberto Rodriguez Jr. for five dollars. Said, ever heard of the pentagram map that covers all of the tragedies of the U.S.? I haven't, but I've heard about similar things. Mm. And here's here's the issue I take with it. They are very liberal about the uh, the term pentagram. Mm. Because, like, a, a pentagram is quite, is pretty specifically a, a type of star of certain proportions. Yeah. It's usually five equidistant points. Mm. Um, so, they'll be like, it's a pentagram, but the, you know, the, the top two will be, like, all the way out here and then go all the way down here. But then the other two points will be, like, right here. Yeah. So, like, these ones are out here, these ones are right here, one's right here. Like, it just... Or these will be too wide, and these will be too narrow. Yeah. So they'll draw like a pentagram, but yeah. it's kind of stretching it. It's a little loose. I'll give you one that's a better example. If you look at Washington D.C., there's a very obvious square and compass. Mm. Um, if you look at the orientation of the Capitol, the Lincoln Memorial, the Washington Monument, and the Jefferson Memorial in the White House, mm. um, they form a, a square and compass. Uh, then people are like, "Oh, well, there's also a pentagram." you know, branching off of the White House. And it's like, it's it's one of those situations where it's really not a pentagram branching off the White House. It's more of a, you know, I can, uh, I don't know, I don't have the, the thing pulled up. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're gonna, yeah, if you look at images. Yeah. So if you look at it, mm -hmm. the square and compass gets drawn in different ways. I prefer to look at it in the, a different way, but. um. Fair. The pentagram, as you can see, is simply not a pentagram. Like, yeah, no. So. Hmm. But yeah, if you look like right here, for example. Boom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it also extends because you can also do it as. Yep. Um, hmm. That's funny how that works. Yep. <laughs> it's very, it's very interesting. Um, but all right. I think that uh, I think that brings us to the end of it. This I think is 823. so. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out. We should be back with Weird Bible on Tuesday. Yep. I do. Um, and then uh, we'll have a video for you guys on Friday, as well as, of course, me being over on Pop Culture Crisis. Yep. So that will be at 3 p.m. if you want to catch that live. And then, uh, yeah, that's that's about it. I will be streaming on Twitch um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and usually it will be Friday, but not this Friday. Yeah. So. Sorry. Yeah, so if you guys want to catch that, that's what we're doing as well. And we will see you guys on the next one.